This isn't going to work well. <laughs> it's fun. If you're like me, you've got average skill and an average budget, but you want to do some awesome scenery work. Well, that normally requires awesome skill or an awesome budget, or does it? In this video, I'm going to show you how I take regular guy techniques and build scenery like this for just cents on the dollar. Hi, I'm Steve Brown and welcome to It's My Railroad. On this channel, we bring you the highest quality modeling videos we possibly can, showing you how to build great models, scenes, dioramas, and model railroad stuff. So if you're into that sort of thing, why not just subscribe? And then don't forget to push that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. As most of you already know, I am in the process of rehabbing Switch Junction, which is on the bottom deck of my layout. As part of that, I wanted to do all the scenery back up in the background because um, I didn't want to have Switch Junction all done and then be dragging scenery materials and stuff over and just honk it up again. So I went through and I got that done. I put some shrubbery, some rocks, some static grass and, and whatnot back there, ballasted the rails, the whole nine yards. And I made a video for that on the channel membership side. If you want to look into becoming a channel member, take a deeper dive. There's a link in the description. Just click it and you'll be on your way. Through the discussion, we decided that what it needed was some trees. And I'm in agreement with that. Problem is, uh, you get two choices, baby. You get cheap trees and plenty of them that don't look really good. Or you can spend a whole ton of money on a few trees that look awesome. Neither one of those options work for me. So I sat down, I experimented with some different techniques and came up with these trees and some ground cover. Pretty excited about it. So I want to show you how I did that. And I thought it'd be fun to just sort of build a little mini diorama to show you the entire technique and how it looks in a finished product. So we're gonna get on that right now. This is a pine tree that I bought for my layout. And looking at it and looking at the ones we just made, uh, I would take mine over this any day of the week and twice on Sunday. Here's another store-bought tree. This is a conifer pine, if you will. And I gotta tell you, my stuff looks better. Now, I could have made my trees darker with a darker static grass. And this little guy right here, uh, he's a little dusty. Another conifer I bought, these were expensive. And I gotta tell you something, uh, I like mine better. So to start off with, I wanted to build a quick makeshift base for the diorama. So I took a big piece of styrofoam and got my hobby saw and just cut on it. And after I'd cut through far enough, I just broke it apart and it left sort of this hillside texture in the background. After that, I mixed me up some sculpt mold And then I just slathered on the sculpt mold I also put it on the sides of it. And after it had dried for a little bit, I took some water, sprayed it on there, and just wiped it all down to make it relatively smooth. Most of this is gonna be covered by ground cover anyway. So with the base done, I set it up to the side so that sculpt mold can start setting up. Now here's the thing. I don't have to wait for the sculpt mold to dry completely to finish this process. That's what's pretty cool about it. As a matter of fact, I built this whole diorama in like five hours on a Friday night. Now let's make some trees. To do that, I'm gonna use these bamboo skewers I got at the market. I'm making in scale trees. So the size of these is yeah, 3 16ths of an inch or something like that. Most of it's not going to be exposed anyway, so I don't really care. But if you're making bigger trees for HO or something, you can use bigger dowels, if you will. Even though you're not going to be able to see great detail because it's in scale, I decided to give some texture to the tree trunk. So what I did is I took my hobby saw and just scraped it along the bamboo skewer to form some semblance of like a park-like texture. Once I had that done, the next thing to do is build the aperture that's going to become the tree. And to do that, I used this, this Filtcrete Basics Custom Fit Heater Filter thing. This one is 20 inches by 30 inches by one inch thick. And I gotta tell you, of those 30 inches, I made 20 trees and some ground cover with about three inches. That means you can get a whole lot of trees out of this. Using scissors, I just cut about one inch off the end of the filter. After that, I went and I cut those pieces into roughly one inch long pieces right up until the end where I left the longer piece and I'll show you why later. Now again, this stuff is one inch thick and that is way too much for what I'm trying to get done. So I went through and I peeled it apart into thinner layers.
Now this stuff's pretty dense, so I went through and I teased it up and I teased it out quite a bit to sort of form a branch structure. Then it was a simple matter to take the skewer and poke it through and run that little set of branches down to about where I wanted the bottom of the branches for this tree. Then I just took a little bit of white glue and dabbed that on where I want it to connect to the trunk. Then sort of spun the skewer around a little bit to make sure that glue got on everything. Then I went through and just repeated that process. For the very top, I just took a little clump of this stuff and put some glue on the end of the skewer and just sort of stuck it down on there. Then I put it aside to let it dry. Now I don't have to let it dry too long because you don't need the white glue to be completely dry to move forward. We just need it kind of tacky. Then we're going to take this long piece right here and try something different. I teased it out to the sides, thinned it out as much as I could. Then I ran some glue down the skewer and then just sort of twisted the skewer up and through and into the piece of filter. Now using two slightly different techniques and then varying the size of the trees, it adds a whole lot more variety to the scene. To thin the branch structure out just a little bit more, I took my scissors and I went in at a 90 degree angle relative to the tree trunk and just started snipping away randomly. To take care of some of the wild hair stragglers, I took my scissors and just gently shaped the outside of the tree until I had a shape that was pleasing to me. Now for me, the branches are sticking out pretty straight to the sides and I, I'm not exactly happy with that. So what I did is I just took and I gently squeezed in a downward kind of motion, clumping it together. This had the effect of causing the branches to sag a little bit and to me made it look more realistic. And you know, if I was looking for a blue tree, it already looks pretty good, doesn't it? Now let's move on to painting. If you look at a real pine tree, you can see that on the bottom of the branches, it's kind of brownish right there, especially towards the bottom. So I wanted to duplicate that effect. The way I did it is I took some brown spray paint and I applied the brown paint in such a way that it got the bottoms of the branches. Then I went through and I got the sides too, so that it would get back onto the trunk and back in on some of the branches. Now, if you're looking for a dead tree amongst all the trees, boom, you've got it right now. I actually installed one of those back here behind Switch Junction, and I think it looks pretty good. But to move on to live trees, I just took some olive colored paint and painted at a 90 degree angle to the tree and then from the top down. I didn't want to get any olive paint on the bottom of the branches. That would defeat the purpose of putting the brown on there. As you can see, after painting it, even before we add any flocking to the tree, it already kind of looks like a pine tree. To get the flocking done, I used Woodland Scenics Static Grass. I used a dark green, a light green, and Harvest Gold. Now for this next step, you can either sprinkle the static grass on top of the tree, or you can use your static grass applicator. I found the applicator made it a little more gangly to try to get it done, and the sprinkling method worked just fine and looked really good. To get the static grass to stick to the tree, you need some kind of an adhesive. And what many people will use is this, hairspray. Yep, heavy duty hairspray. I started by putting quite a bit of hairspray on the tree where I was gonna put the first layer of static grass. We start by taking the brownish static grass and sprinkling it on the bottom of the branches in the same way we put on the brown paint. Don't worry if it gets a little clumpy here and there with this, because you can just sort of tap it 
on the side of, in this case, my trash can, and all the loose stuff will fall off. Then I went through with the light green static grass, and I applied that at 90 degrees to the trunk of the tree. Finally, I took the dark green static grass, and I sprinkled it on so it fell towards the top of all the branches. Now, what those three colors do is it gives me the semblance of some sort of dyingish brown stuff on the bottom and then some highlights in between to really give some variety and a good look to these trees. After I got the static grass on all three of those trees, I just put them off to the side and let them dry while we moved on to making some ground cover. While those trees are drying, I decided to take a shot at making my own static grass mat. Now, it's not actually a static grass mat, okay? But it's the equivalent to it. And I used basically that same filter material and some paint and the static grass and made one. Let me show you how. I took some of the filter material and I tore it apart and got it as thin as I could. Then I teased it out to the sides as far as I could to leave some voids but not have it completely tear apart. In this case, however, I didn't tease it up because I'm not trying to make it high. I'm trying to make it low, flat ground cover as best I could. As a matter of fact, at one point, I just sort of squish it down with my hands to make it as flat as I can. After that, it's very nearly the same technique as making the trees. We put some brown paint on one side of it and get it as covered as we can. Then I didn't even let that dry. I just flipped it over and I painted the top green. I painted from all angles though, so I can make sure and get rid of that blue color and it's all green except for the very bottom, which is brown. And I didn't even let that dry. I just grabbed some hairspray and sprayed all over the top of it. Then I put the light green static grass in the, my static grass applicator and just sprinkled it on until I had a pretty good coating. Then to add some variety, took my dark green static grass and applied that as well. To give it even more color and variety, I went through with some Woodland Scenics Fine Turf Green Grass and just sprinkled it on there on the top. You can see the effect looks pretty cool. And to finish it off, I put a very light sprinkling of Scenic Express Light Green Fine Ground Foam on there. It's kind of like some blooms or something on top of the ground cover. Once I had everything installed, I hit the top of it with a bunch more hairspray and I put that off to the side. So we've got our trees drying and we've got our ground cover drying. Let's get back to the diorama base real quick. Now, if you remember, I put a thin coating of sculpt mold on this, which meant it's pretty dry now, even though it's not completely dry, but that doesn't matter. We can keep moving. Since this is just a quick diorama build, I didn't want to cover the outside with balsa wood or something like that. So I just took some gray chalk paint and I painted around the whole perimeter of it. And then I did what many of you would do. I just took some brown paint, any kind of dark brown paint will work, and painted the whole top of it and got rid of all of the white. I used brown chalk paint to cover the top of that diorama and chalk paint dries pretty quickly, at least well enough that we can move on to the next step. To start with, I took some brown chalk paint and basically painted the trunk from the bottom of the branches down. Once I let that set up a little bit, I took some gray paint and went through and dry brushed over the texture that I'd put on earlier to kind of bring out the bark. Finally, I took some black acrylic paint, made a wash out of it, and then washed along the trunks to really pump up the detail.
with the diorama base painted and before I move on to putting the ground cover on, I want to locate my trees. Now, like I said, the sculpt the mold is not quite dry yet, so it was pretty easy to take one of the trees, cut off about the trunk length that I want, and then just stuff it down through the sculpt mold into the styrofoam. Once I was happy with the location of all three trees, I pulled them back out and marked their location with these little cut off pieces of skewer. I just took some full strength white glue, squirted it out onto the diorama, and then I used a big brush to cover every square inch of the top of that thing, being careful not to get it on the gray on the sides. Now here's a tip. If you're gonna do this, make sure you get every square inch of that covered in the glue. Otherwise, with what we're getting ready to do, some of the ground cover is not gonna stick and you're gonna see a painted brown spot. The good news is we painted it brown in case we miss a spot. Now, many of you have seen me use real sifted dirt for what I'm getting ready to do here, but I've recently started playing around with fine brown ballast. And I gotta tell you, it takes to the alcohol solution and the glue solution really well and doesn't get really dark like dirt does when you get it wet. I just took that brown ballast and I just sprinkled it all over the top of the diorama. Now, normally I would do this in such a way that I can take my shop back and vacuum up the excess, but the ballast is kind of beaten up because I've done that a few times now. And it's such a small area, I didn't think it mattered. I just dumped it back into the trash can. You know, I decided I want to take this finished product and put it on my desk at work. So to do that, I decided to add a little bit more detail to the diorama, starting with using this Woodland Scenics Earth Blend Ground Foam. Basically, I just sprinkled it randomly, but I made sure not to get it up next to where the tree trunks are gonna go. Because in the real world, you don't see that kind of foliage all the way up to the tree trunk. With that ground foam down on there, the next thing to do is put a very thin layering of pine needles up next to the tree trunk. So I just took some of the brownish static grass and sprinkled it on in kind of a circular shape right next to the markers for where the trees go. Now we get to put on the ground cover we made. I cut off a little piece, did a little bit more teasing on it, and then just started putting it down on the diorama places I thought it would look good. Once I was stoked about how that ground cover action was coming out, I did the standard isopropyl alcohol over everything and then the mixture of white glue and water solution to glue it all down. Now it's time for the moment of truth. Let's put the trees back on the diorama. I pulled out the marker, I put some glue in the hole, and then I pushed the tree into the hole. Boy, that was complicated. With all the trees planted back in their holes, you can kind of still see the hole. So I took some brown static grass and I sprinkled it up around the base of the tree and it concealed those holes really well. And when it was done and I let it dry, this is what I had. Like I said, that project took me about five hours to do on a Friday night and I really enjoyed it. But I made 15 trees for the back of the layout here in one evening and all of them are unique and look really good. So. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. If you've just got regular guy skills like I do, and you can watch this video and put some paint and some glue on some junk, you can make trees that look that awesome. It was not hard to do. So anyway, hey, I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me and watching that video. I had a ton of fun making it. And until next time, my name is Steve Brown. Rail on, my friends.